Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to try and uncover some of the myths and confusion surrounding the international and EU versions of the Tyrannis firmware. When you first start out in FPV you quickly find out you've got lots to learn. Apart from just getting to grips with these awesome mini quads in first person view you have to understand the tech the firmware, the electronics, wiring and soldering, as well as solving and fixing the pure mechanical problems when you crash and break something. There's a whole bunch of new skills that you need to acquire. And that's part of the fun. To be honest, I think the biggest problem is sometimes not knowing what question to ask when you've got a problem. There's lots of people out there producing YouTube videos and blogs who will have the answers, but unless you know the right jargon to type into Google, you'll be pretty stumped for a while. Unlike everything, you gradually pick things up with time and experience. Sure, you're going to make loads of mistakes, but it can be really frustrating when you can't get your quad to fly and you don't know if it's something really broken or if there's simply some configuration issue that you've missed. Recently, a friend of mine bought a bind and fly version of the awesome Chameleon from Armatan. Now, Armatan offer a build service, so you can just choose all the options you want and a couple of weeks later, a very nicely built quad gets delivered from Taiwan. He already had a Tyrannis X9D transmitter, so he'd chosen the version that had an FR Sky X4D receiver built in, but he couldn't get it to bind to the transmitter. Whatever he did, it just failed to bind. He watched loads of YouTube videos, and the conclusion he came to that something was broken. So he asked me to have a quick look. This was a classic learning curve problem. The transmitter was an EU version because he bought it in the UK. And the Armatan had been built in Taiwan. And the X4R receiver was an international version. I've been asked about this loads of times before and I realised that there's a lot of myths and confusion surrounding all this and how to fix it. So I'll try and explain. The Tyrannis transmitter and FR Sky receiver come in two basic flavours international and EU. In simple terms this means they use different protocols and have different ways of transmitting and listening. These are dictated by the telecoms licensing authorities for each region. They also set out things like the maximum transmitter power, what needs to be licensed and so on. The main difference between them is the EU version implements something called listen before talk or LBT. This is a requirement of EU law. The Tyrannis runs a version of OpenTX, some open source software. You can think of this as the operating system of the radio. It's stored in memory and can be updated via the USB connection on the back. This memory also stores your model configurations, logs and lots of other stuff. The SD card in the back is used to save your model backups, keep your sound files and voice packs, plus a load of other bits and pieces. It's also there to transfer firmware to the receiver. Under here is the integrated XJT module that comes on the Tyrannis as standard. You can plug other modules in here that use other protocols like Spectrum, but this is what's in here straight out of the box. This is the part that does the actual transmitting and it's connected to the antenna and it has its own memory on board where the firmware lives. If you've got an EU version then it's been flashed with the EU compliant firmware. The confusion comes because there's essentially two bits of firmware on the Tyrannis. The operating system or OpenTX and the XJT transmitter module firmware that's region specific. You don't have to flash both because they're sort of independent of each other. So you can put newer versions of OpenTX on your Tyrannis and you don't need to touch the XJT firmware. Similarly, you can change the XJT firmware without having to upgrade the OpenTX firmware. There's loads of great other videos out there that cover flashing new versions of OpenTX and the XJT module, so I won't cover it here. What I am going to show you is how to flash the firmware on your receiver so that you've got a matching set of EU software or firmware on both. 
To flash the correct EU firmware version on this X4R receiver that I've taken out of the Chameleon is pretty straightforward. But before you start, you'll need to make up a lead like this one. It's basically three wires, so you've got power, ground and signal. One end's got a servo plug on and the other end is the X4R plug. All we're going to do is to download the correct receiver firmware from the FR Sky website, put it on the Tyrannis SD card, plug the receiver into the Tyrannis with this lead on these connectors in the back and then we'll transfer the firmware from here onto the receiver and flash it with the EU version. So let's have a closer look at this lead that we need. Basically this part here is a cable and plug that you will find in the X4R package when you get it. It's basically the smart port or the telemetry connection and you'll find when it comes there will also be a white wire on the fourth pin that's an analog input but uh, I take it off because I, I'm never going to use that so the way this works is we plug this in here looking at it from right to left we've got yellow which is signal red which is power and black which is ground I've connected that to a servo plug and looking at it this way round, we've got power, ground and signal. Now what we're going to do is connect that servo wire onto these pins in the back of the Tyrannis. Now as you can see there's five pins here and I labelled this up so I don't forget it. The top two pins we're not going to use and the pins run from the bottom they go signal ground and power so this is our plug we've got signal on yellow at the bottom ground on pin 2 and power on pin 3 so before we start we just need to get the latest firmware from the FR Sky website that's frskyrc.com go to download and we need firmware and we're looking for the X4R firmware which is here so we will save this to a location I've already set up which is here and there we go so this comes down as a zip file which you'll need to extract you can do the same thing on Windows I just find using a Mac a little bit easier when it's talking on USB because of the drivers so this zip file contains two hex files one is the EU build and one is the non EU build and because we're trying to match the EU transmitter to an EU receiver we're going to be using the EU build so what we need to do now is get these two hex files in fact we only need that one um, onto our Tyrannus now the way we do this is to put the Tyrannus into what's called bootloader mode. This simply means holding the two trim tabs in and turning the radio on. And as you'll see, you get the bootloader screen. Now, we don't need to use any of these. As it says, we just need to plug a USB cable in for mass storage. So, if we take our USB lead, plug it in here and wait and you'll see now that there are two devices that appear in Finder here. Now the reason there's two is because effectively there are two devices on here. The first one 
This is the uh, where the operating system and uh, OpenTX is stored. We don't want to touch that. The second one is the SD card. So what I'm going to do is go into the firmware's folder, create a new folder called X4R. We go back to our location where we downloaded these two files and we've extracted them, copy them and go back to our firmware's X4R directory which is on the Tyrannus. So this directory we're looking at here now is the SD card on the Tyrannus. Now one of the quirks of um, I'm not sure whether it's OpenTX or whether it's just fundamentally the the low level operating system within the Tyrannus is some of these file names can be longer than will be displayed when you view them on the Tyrannus here. So the safest thing to do is I find to just rename these. I'll just get rid of this X4RSP on both of them. So if you find that when we do a step later on and you can't see all these files on the screen here it's because the file names are too long. Okay, so we now have these two hex files on the sitting on the SD card in the Tyrannus. So we can disconnect these. It's the safest way to do it on a Mac. Just takes a bit of time. There we go and we can turn our Tyrannus off well we can't because it's powered by the USB lead we can disconnect it and now we're ready to start using the software that's firmware that's actually sitting on the SD cards so before we go ahead and flash the firmware onto this X4R I thought I'd just demonstrate the problem to you so I've already set up a model on here called Chameleon um, and we'll go through our usual bind process which is to page and scroll up to bind we put the transmitter into bind mode and it will start chirping so the way that you bind um, is to press the button on the receiver keep it held down and plug some power in keeping it held down and I can immediately see there's a problem because we've got this solid red and green light I can let that button go now come out of bind mode we'll recycle the power on the chameleon you may think it's bound but if we plug power in we've got the horrid red flashing light which tells us we're not bound and this is exactly the problem that we've got because the firmware on here is the international version and we are running the EU version on our transmitter so let's get that unplugged right what we need to do is to connect the transmitter to this receiver using our little cable that we made up so it's a little bit fiddly we plug that into the smart port and we need to connect this up to the bottom three pins as I demonstrated earlier so we've got yellow on the bottom which is signal ground in the middle and plus at the top and they are the bottom four pins on there. Okay, all oh, looks good. This is a little bit fiddly because it's everything is connected to the uh, chameleon. Right, 
So, press and hold the menu button. This takes us to the system menu and go to the second page by pressing page. Scroll down to the directory where we stored the firmware for the X4R on the SD card. This is what you're looking at here, the SD card. Hit enter. You can see the directory I created called X4R. Hit enter. Now, you'll see there's four files on here. We only transferred two. This is just because of the some of the hidden system files that the Mac puts on here. Ignore any files which begin dot. Um, what we need is the EU version. If you remember, we changed the names of these so that they would fit. So if you get to this screen and you don't see all the files that you put onto the SD card on your computer, it's because the file names are too long for the operating system to display. So we want the EU version. Select it, press and hold enter, and we want to flash an external device. Press enter. and the receiver will go through its little dance. It's also powered up the Armatan, which doesn't really matter. And as you can see, we're writing that firmware, transferring it from the SD card in the Tyrannis down here onto the receiver. Takes a little while. Whilst we're doing that, I'll show you my awesome stick protector. It's a bit flash. Doesn't really do very much to be honest, but it looks great. There we go, that's done. That's powered off, we're all finished. We can exit out of this, exit out of that, exit out of that. We can now disconnect our cable from the X4R and we can remove it from the back of the Tyrannus. Don't need that any longer. So, what we need to do now is swap these over, it's just a little bit easier. So we now have the EU firmware on here, and we can try and flash it again. So we go back to menu, page, scroll up to bind, hit enter, and it will start chirping. So we're in bind mode. Press and hold the button on the PCB. Connect the battery, and you see the difference now is the red light is flashing, whereas previously it wasn't. That actually means it's bound. And if you don't believe me, the quick way to check is to disconnect the battery, exit out of the uh, bind mode on the Tyrannus. Now, the transmitter's still on. If we plug this in, just as we would do normally. Lo and behold, we have the magic green light, which means these are bound and they are correctly talking to each other. So one last thing before I finish. Um, I don't actually have to do this flashing of um, receiver software very often. And this cable, as you can see, is very useful and pretty easy to lose. What I tend to do is keep this in the back of the radio and I've already marked up on this label where the pins are that uh, are needed which way around it's needed to be connected so there we are pretty much we are ready to configure the rest of Betaflight on this Armatan Chameleon and we'll be ready to fly I hope you found that helpful and it's uncovered some of the myths and confusion. And as usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my very best to answer them. And I'll see you next time.